Hi. Yeah. Hi. 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 My name's Lee Graber. I am a developer at Microsoft on the SQL Server Analysis Services team. I'm responsible for Power Pivot for SharePoint integration. And we're back. So, there was one other interesting piece of our SharePoint integration, Power Pivot SharePoint integration that we haven't talked about yet, which we've been calling the Power Pivot Web Service. It's really basically one web method, uh, which we're just calling redirect request for the time being. Um, and the interesting scenario that it opens up is that after I've created this XLSX and I upload it, and we've already talked about how you can view in browser and interact with it, and it interacts just like a normal Excel workbook would in Excel services, you can now, after uploading this workbook, you can go in and take a tool like Excel 2010, which likes to import data from external data sources like AS. And you can go to, you know, the data tab and, you know, import data and choose SQL Server Analysis Services. And where it says server, you can type in something like HTTP colon whack whack, you know, foo slash shared document slash my workbook.xlsx. Looks kind of odd. Uh, I've now given a URL. I didn't give a server. I didn't give anything. I just said, this is the actual workbook. Uh, and when you do that, you know, if you go down and it'll actually say, you know, there's a databases drop down. If you click on it, a connection will actually be initiated. So Excel 2010 happens to use our Lady B library, uh, MSO lab. What OLADB will do will actually take this, recognize, oh, I'm talking to an XLSX, so I need to go to my web service, front end, which will be able to interpret this, do security validation based on the Windows authenticated identity, and just as Excel services via MSO Lab over here, I'm sorry, this is MSO Lab, connected there. We connect to here also to the system service and trigger the loading of the database, at which point we become this becomes a pass through router. He's just flowing the XMLA request through and back all the way around. Um, so this enables really interesting scenarios in that I could have built my own workbook, imported a lot of really interesting data, maybe I built some cool reports, uh, and then a coworker comes in and says, Oh, you've already got all the data that I want but I want to create some new visualizations on top of it. So they go in, they open up Excel 2010, they say, all right, I'd like to create a new pivot table, my data source is, and they point to the XLSX that you just uploaded. Uh, at which point, flow, again, this is, you know, the claim is binding just as it was there, user identities flowed all the way through the system, all the security validation happens, and everything just works. Uh, this, along with our OLADB provider, we have enabled this for uh, AMO and ADOMD.net, which are our two other uh, libraries. These are managed. Um, ADOMD.net would be what gets triggered if you use something like SQL Server Management Studio, uh, where you can type something in like that also. Uh, another thing that's interesting to note is that when you do this, um, a, the database is loaded read-only, so if you open it in SSMS or something, if you try and send a process command, it won't work. The other thing is you have a restricted view. Uh, so even though we're eventually flowing you to a physical analysis server, which may have you know, 50 databases loaded, you can only see one. You will only ever be able to see this guy. Uh, your drop-down list will give you only one. The name will have this along with some GUID. Uh, so there should be no confusion. Um, and uh, yeah, those are the main restrictions to understand. Uh, you don't need to worry about which server it's actually loaded on. We could have 50 servers. It'll get loaded somewhere. Um, so that's another one of the interesting scenarios that is enabled. Um, 
think we have a minute or two left. One thing to note, which is interesting, is after I created this workbook, which is what we call linking to another workbook that actually has the embedded data, I could take this workbook and upload it into SharePoint and then try and use Excel services to interact with it, which would again come over here to MS OLAP. Now the data source is not dollar embedded dollar. Uh, the data source is this XLSX. So when we detect that, we actually have a component. So instead of immediately going back and doing our redirect request, we actually call into that channel transport that we talked about earlier and say, is this XLSX in the same farm that I am in right now within the context of Excel services? The reason for that is someone could have actually configured a firewall here. So if they configure a firewall here, which allows inbound calls uh, from outside the firewall, they might not be allowing inbound calls from within the firewall. So if we tried to make this hop in certain security configurations, we would actually fail. So what we do here is we say, oh, you're linking to another workbook. That workbook has this URL. Let me see if that URL is in the same farm as the workbook in which I am actually being run. Excel services actually tells us the context in which we are running. And if it is, we go directly to our system service. If it isn't, then there's some, you know, you know farm two out, out here somewhere. We'll make the call out to here to the Power Pivot web service running in farm two. Uh, but as long as it's in the same farm, we'll bypass this loop back and go direct. Uh, and hence, we can get around any potential firewall issues. So everything else is very similar to how it worked in the embedded case. Uh, this is what we will refer to as the linked case. Ta-da.